Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, welcoming you back to another Sunday special episode of our franchise mode Let's Play in Planet Zoo. There is a lot to do today. Uh, we are going to be focusing on the India sort of entrance area, the Moria Plaza area, and the train station there as well. But first, there were just a couple of things that I wanted to do on the uh, tiger head sculpture over here based on some early feedback. I got some of the earlier comments on the uh, previous episode. From yesterday as well as uh, some things that I noticed myself as well afterwards uh, mainly just trying to get that poofiness of uh, of tiger you know cheek area lip area down right uh, so a little bit of time spent on uh, on this sculpture but then we're going to go ahead and get a lot more done hey as we head back to uh, Moria Plaza to uh, to work really hard on that and we we make a lot of progress so I'm very happy with uh, uh, with today's time lapse as well uh, because we do finally finish something that's been uh, on hold for such a long time. Uh, but yeah, you can see I kind of made the, the lip and, and cheek area a bit poofier. I rounded the shapes a bit more because, yeah, felines do have rounder shapes. And then I saw uh, a, a few of you were asking for uh, whiskers, add whiskers. And I was like, all right, sure, let's try it. I don't know exactly how well this works, if I'm completely honest. Like, I couldn't find different plants or anything that worked better. Uh, so yeah, guys, let me know if you have any ideas on how we might execute the whiskers. I don't want to use, like, light or anything. I want it to be a quote-unquote natural sculpture, like nature-based products primarily. So, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see if I can figure something else out. And then over here, just adjusting the nose a little bit as well, using a different part you can see of that same rock to try and get that rounded, uh, look and feel. And I can't remember now how far I pushed this. This, this part was a bit more of a struggle, uh, just getting it to look right mainly because of how the shadows were casting. As you can see, it looks like there's like multiple layers to the nose. Uh, found a different rotational angle that I think worked a little bit better, moved some of the other rocks around. And again, just continuing to get that poofiness, you know, in there because I, I feel like that's what was missing. Uh, I don't know, yeah, there's something, there's still some more work to do over here, but this is not what today's episode is about. So very soon you'll see, I'm relatively satisfied about where we are. I decided to pull back towards uh, the Moria Plaza. Now I do have to hit play for a little bit because I want to get some VFX going. I want to get the uh, fountain at the, you know, at the end of the trunk over here for this elephant sculpture. So I hit play for a little bit. And fortunately, as I hit play, uh, no major notifications pop up, though happiness does become uh, a little low, unfortunately, but we'll deal with that later. Also, fortunately, we do get uh, the sun to, well, sun was already up, but we get the rain to go away. So now we have a little less, uh, you know, overcast, gloomy look uh, for uh, for our work today. So very happy that that worked out nicely. So first things first, we put down that fountain base layer because I needed the, um, as much as I'd love to just build from scratch and not have to deal with that uh, pre-existing base layer, we needed the water um effect at the bottom that you can see so uh so i had to get that base layer in and then build around it or build on top of it so you'll see i use all of the standard india construction pieces nothing too crazy going on over here uh just a little bit of duplicating where possible to round off these corners and whatnot um i wish the uh classic set allowed you to customize colors as well because i mean it, it's obviously marble centered but it'd be nice to be able to customize it and make it you know sandstone or you know, limestone or whatever it might be something else other stuff but alas that is not the case so i have to work around uh, i have to work around it uh, i have to work around it and the sometimes rather often frustrating selection system that planet zoo comes with um yes a, a, a yeah yeah it was, it was a bit of a struggle but we got to figure it out and uh, yeah just you know again nothing too crazy or complicated going on over here this central structure is already complicated enough and while i want things to feel a little gaudy uh, I don't want it to feel too gaudy. There's a there's a fine line that I want to be very wary of. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the central piece is not very difficult. It's all very square shaped, so not a very difficult thing to pull off at all. Um, however, there are uh, some harder elements when it comes to the uh, the base base. I don't know how else to, to put it, like the, the clover leaf looking thing. So see, I rotate things because I like the squared off shape a bit better than the the uh, diamond shape. Uh, and I, I lower the elephant as well. Again, just trying to make it the right level of gaudiness. Uh, I, I think this works a little bit better. So uh, I think now, yes, I start working on the base base, so to speak. Uh, just using a brick and then have to duplicate it around the rim and, and try and make it all fit nicely. Um, so as you're watching me do that, just want to mention really quickly, folks, if you've been enjoying this series and you'd like to see more Planet Zoo on the channel continuing at pace, I would greatly appreciate it if you 
kept letting me know by leaving your likes and comments down below. As you've by now, you know, seen and maybe noticed and realized, uh, I do read through all the comments. They bring me a lot of joy just to read through the comments and see what everyone's thinking and saying. Uh, so that makes a very big difference. Uh, and I also take a look at the uh, number of likes and comments uh, after every episode just to get an understanding of interest levels, uh, if people are still interested in a certain series or not, and how interested they are in some things versus others. So uh, yeah, if you want to see Planet Zoo, continue on the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, uh, you know, give me feedback, thoughts, opinions, uh, platitudes, uh, things you dislike, uh, any, anything you have uh, to say, uh, especially if it'll, you know, help make sure that you're having a better time with uh, with the episodes I'm releasing. Because after all, uh, that's the ultimate reason for, for making videos, right? So people can in enjoy what they watch. Uh, anyway, so just thought I'd ramble about that for a moment as I did the rather mundane task of building the uh, the lower ridge or rim or whatever we call it, the base, the base base, as I've been calling it so far. Uh, and then using that little pillar piece as well to make the uh, final central, you know, uh, point of contact blend a bit more nicely. And overall, you know what, pretty pretty happy with how that uh, how that looks. Uh, not sure what I did there, why I went back to Bagraba. Oh, you know what, I, I realized what was bothering me a little bit was I wanted to see why people, this is when I noticed people were unhappy and I was like, why? What did I change to make people unhappy? Anyway, that's besides the point, though. I didn't want to get distracted by that, obviously. Uh, I don't want y'all to miss any of the management stuff. That, that, that I can't do that stuff in time-lapse mode. Um, but the next step was to seal off these sta uh, staff rooms and stuff. Sorry. Um, the This has been sitting ugly for a very long time. And I was like, you know what? We're taking care of the plaza. We're going to take care of the train station. Let's also just take care of this in, in one fell swoop. Why, why leave it? So again, using just the standard architectural pieces, I think the colors and stuff work well enough. We have just enough... Uh, customization going on that it's going to look nice without uh, needing to, you know, spend an hour on these staff buildings like I did the first session. Remember when I, when I, well, not the first, but among the first episodes when I decorated our central staff facilities, that was like an hour long, uh, you know, session. So I didn't want to do that for, for these facilities. Uh, I figured it wasn't, it didn't need overcomplicating. So we kept it simple and, uh, you know, obviously we can't keep it too simple, so it is an elite zoo, so we can't keep it too simple. So I go ahead and drop a couple of pillars in just to break up the silhouette a little bit. Um, it's always, I've always felt a breaking up a silhouette is the quickest way to make something look visually a bit more appealing. Um, just from a quick distance, if you can get a quick read that is different than just a flat or a smooth shape, it immediately makes it a bit more interesting. So that's all often my first goal when I want to make something look uh, interesting uh, quickly. Uh, and I also add this little plaque or, you know, decorative element over there because it felt a little naked without it, I guess. Uh, now, time for Moria Plaza. So first things first, I expand the uh, maze a little bit. Hopefully the peacocks are going to use that a bit more. Uh, they've largely, I, I haven't paid attention to them much lately. But they've largely stayed in their little hard shelter area. So perhaps I should get some more of their toys and stuff, uh, you know, in the maze so they'll start using it. But at the same time, I want to make sure that our people can actually see the peafowl um because otherwise what what's the point of a walkthrough right uh nonetheless i expand the uh, the maze a little bit pretty happy with how that is uh, and I'll, I'll deal with the rest of it later i do go back to the maze uh but i decide to deal with this first so you'll remember previously when i tried to do this it was causing a massive headache uh but for some reason it works a lot more smoothly today thankfully Basically, I want to build a bit of a balcony plaza relaxing area over here. Unfortunately, I can't, for some reason, loop it all the way around. Oh, I know why. It's because the path below is uh, is intersecting, I think. Nonetheless, it's fine. I'm really happy with how it does shape up because, again, like we want to build that bit of a, a balcony kind of a look and feel. So now that I've got the path down, I know people can actually reach it and we can actually decorate it accordingly. And hopefully people will use it to uh, get a different vantage point on the peafowl as well. Uh, bringing that roof down, I just put it, you know, aside and then bringing it back down now to provide a little bit of uh, cover from rain if people require it. Uh, and then you can see I use the uh, the grid system to get squared off uh, pathing, just because it'll I think it will work a little bit nicer with the the pieces and the parts I have to work with because I can kind of hide the floor and the uh, the curb, if you will, uh, using these you know blocks. And of course, you know, I have the option to, and so I will expand. The, the balcony to make it look like it's squared off, even though it's not actually squared off at the edge over here. Just, you know, a visual hack, if you will. Don't need to, uh, you know, I'm not going to conform with the game's rules. I'll make it do what I want it to do. Even if people can't technically go there, it'll look like they can go there. And that's what matters. Um, and then, you know, again, just getting the fencing off over here so no one nosedives into the uh, 
the plaza. That would be very unfortunate, though at least it's not a dangerous animal down there. Actually, I wonder if... Hmm. I wonder if peafowl would peck at you. Or if they always, like, kind of run and scurry away. Anyway, sorry, just curious. Uh, but yeah, getting the, the fencing done over here. Uh, a couple of limitations because of how the sizing works out, so I have to fill the, the gaps out some way, so I decided to get these pillars in here as well. Um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of the time these little things get a little frustrating. It's a, it's a little confusing why things don't snap perfectly, but, you know, then I realize, oh, right, Party Elite, you decided that uh, this entire plaza being slightly off-angle is not the end of the world, and I'm going to regret that for this entire episode. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, as soon as I'm done with the plaza, it's not going to be a problem anymore. And uh, today we, we finished the plaza. And we're working on the flooring over here again. Using the sandstone flooring, I felt like it looked nice. Um, it was a nice kind of texture. It fit the uh, the area and stuff as well. And again, just using the grid system to help snap things into place very easily. Not having to do anything too crazy. Actually worked very smoothly. So worked surprisingly smoothly compared to how much I was struggling with it the last time I tried. So maybe that's, uh, maybe they updated something over the, you know, months now that the game has been out or maybe i've just become a bit more familiar with the game's limitations and systems so i can navigate it a bit better whatever it might be my god am i glad it worked out nicely um so yeah now just you know making some tweaks here and there we've got to make sure that the um uh you know the stores don't have little bits that are sticking out or uh gaps in their in their coverings and i think now is when i actually go in and cover the uh, yeah i i seal the the backs off as well because now people are actually going to be able to come in here and and i don't want to have an ugly look i decided to go with a brick look back there i think rather than just a flat stand sandstone uh, and then i decide you know what the from up top this is looking rather bland and based on my slight paradigm shift from last session and uh my love of rooftop gardening and how beautiful it can look i decided that we're going to get a rooftop garden at the, uh, the Moria Plaza as well. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, rooftop gardens are a relatively common sight in India, but if someone knows better, let me know. Uh, whether it's a, a common thing, you know, culturally or socially or not, it's something we're going to be doing in our zoo. Um, you know, think of it as like a... just a nice way to get a little bit of extra greenery going on. Why not, right? Um, and I, I, I wouldn't mind getting some vines and stuff up the sides, but I don't know which of those plants actually grow like vines on the side of a building. So if you all have any insight on that, let me know that as well. Uh, I just had to get the mulch down here as well, just because it added a bit of depth to it when you when you look at the you know rooftop garden from the top, and I like that. So I just got the mulch in there. Again, we've got the money now, so I'm not as concerned as I once used to be about uh, you know, being frugal, so to speak. I got 105k. I can spend a little bit of money to add some you know small details here and there. And that's why I like playing franchise mode rather than sandbox mode. You can see um, the 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 zoo get wealthier. You, you can see and feel the effects of our, you know, successes and also our failures <laughs> and definitely also our failures when we had to slow everything down for a handful of episodes. Um, but yeah, just making these steps over here. Unfortunately, the uh, previous steps didn't work. I couldn't just copy them over. Uh, and unfortunately, also, it's this weird, like, slight angle, I think, that we've got going on over here. So I just have to go in and adjust the steps a little bit. Another thing that happened, which... Uh, I haven't noticed yet. I'm pretty sure it just happened, but uh, I actually, well, I'll, I'll point it out later. You'll Maybe you'll notice it before I point it out, but uh, I'll point it out later when it becomes relevant. Uh, but yeah, just doing what we did before with the steps, you know, just barely covering, uh, just, you know, getting a millimeter higher than the, uh, the actual um, steps themselves so that people can still actually interact with them. And hiding this little corner section over here as well. Just going to use the regular blocks, I believe. I square it off. Yeah, there we go. Um, and, uh, yeah, pretty happy with how that looks. I decided to, um, there we go, put some plants down over here and at the back over here as well. Trying to make it look all, you know, pretty from all sides. And I believe now is when I, yes, get the bench in here as well. And I'm actually really happy with this bench placement, uh, and the bins and all. Uh, I'm also happy with the lighting that we're going to do, because we do take care of lighting today as well. Um, that back balcony space becomes extremely cozy. I'm, I'm a big fan of, I'm personally happy with it, with how it came out. I also decided to get the education boards up over here. Again, if people are actually coming up there, I want to make sure they're getting their education. They're not missing out on that. Uh, and of course, donation bins as well, because I want to make sure I'm getting their donations, you know, to, to help the world and also the zoo. Uh, I contemplate putting a toilet block up over here if one will fit nicely, but then I realize we've already got one, you know, right by the railway station, so we don't really need it. Uh, and then the last order of business with the balcony that isn't, you know, that's daytime work is uh, getting this uh, support structure in because it just didn't look physically, you know, legitimate. 
So I wanted to get the pillars in there. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with how that's come together. I mean, y'all let me know what you guys think about that. But I think that's all the work I do in terms of construction stuff. Because we'd almost finished the plaza. It was just some small details and a little rear balcony area that needed work. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, next up is the railway station, which is another, you know, project that's been sitting with literally just a facade for so long. So it's time to finish this off. Added that second floor that I was talking about. And then at the same time, I realized, ooh, what if we cover this walkway rather than leaving it open and not knowing what to do with it what if we cover it and uh more details on that in a bit i do more than just put a flat flooring you know section down on this uh but i feel like that's working quite nice it's a nice covered walkway you know you stay protected from the rain and uh, we can doll it up with a little bit of greenery there you go uh, another you know rooftop garden thing going on over here i don't know i just uh I liked it. Now, I did want to build a bit of a sculpture over here. Uh, not a super, like, detailed one, like the, the tiger head or anything, but I wanted to get, like, you know, animals moving towards the train station. I thought it'd be a cute thing, but unfortunately, the Indian... Like, so the elephant, for example, that's an African elephant, uh, and there are differences between African and Indian elephants. The rhino that's available is uh, not the Indian rhino, so there are no sculptures available, so I got rid of that idea. And then I started playing with more gardening up top. You'll see in, in a moment's time. I uh, got some of those, you know, fabric pieces in there as well. I felt like that worked nicely to just transition into the station. And I wanted to make the, uh, I, I guess it sort of becomes like a kind of a minaret-ish structure for where our uh, clock tower is going to go. Um, yeah, just thought it just thought, thought it made sense and it looks nice the rounded you know shapes and all it stands very tall uh and uh before i actually get the clock up there because that involves going back and copying it over i decided to work on some other elements over here make the exit uh a little bit nicer on that railway station mainly because even though it's the exit when you're walking through the walkway it's kind of the thing you see it becomes a bit of a centerpiece um, and then now we're just going to copy this uh, clock face over. Uh, by the way, those of you, uh, again, just to explain, because many of you uh, missed it, I still get the question asked a little bit. Uh, so 1.37 p.m. in like 24-hour clock or in military time is 13.37, and 1.337 is uh, elite speak, and it means elite, among other things. It, it's how you, how you spell elite in elite speak. Uh, anyway, I worked with those cube sections for a little bit um, to try and... Uh, square off the the clocks it just didn't look good I, I didn't like how it looked i wanted to see what how it might look and then back over here working a bit more on the maze just trying to create a private space for our peafowl if they wanted to hide uh from people then they have a, a space they can go back to and, and really tuck away and hide now over here just temporarily making a blueprint i need to remember to delete this blueprint but just so that i can very easily replicate to the other side over here uh, unfortunately the game doesn't allow you to duplicate multiple architectural pieces like walls or floors so that blueprint hack is the way i do it just to you know save some time um but yeah quickly kind of boxed off the, the the railway and then i wanted to create an entrance and an exit for the train as well it would be pretty nice to come into and go out of you know something a bit more interesting than just a square i think uh and i figured you know we're in the middle of this time lapse might as well might as well do it right now i also adjust the terrain a little bit too much grass growing through my sandstone, you know, squares and stuff. Didn't like that. And then uh, capping off the, the ground floor over here with some decorative elements and uh, some windows that you can look out of and you know, light up the, the area nicely as well during the day. Um, but yeah, we're going to cap off the back with a couple of these, like, you know, faux windows, I suppose, and uh, finish the front and the other end off as well, I believe, with... Uh, well, just trying to seal off the thing so it feels like there's an, an actual, you know, entrance slash exit kind of a feel. It, it feels like an actual complete building. Um, I don't know if this necessarily makes sense. I mean, it's a steam train. This uh, area is going to get pretty steamy, I suppose. But uh, I guess that's why we've got the windows, right? Uh, definitely like and, and prefer how this looks. Oh, there's the camera acting up on me. I uh, prefer how this looks with... Uh, with the archway kind of sealed off. It, it feels like an actual... You, you see what I mean? It feels like an actual exit in a building. Wow, that went by very quickly in the time lapse. Um, I, I personally feel like it, uh, it it completes the piece a bit better. And then over here, you can see again, I'll put down the mulch and then just duplicating some of these plants over to get uh, that rooftop garden thing going. Um, it's a very uh, simple way to make, uh, make things look pretty on on a roof make it green and flowery and i felt like the colors actually worked very nicely as well for the uh, peafowl um so yeah pretty happy with how that worked and now is lighting time so you know use that blueprint hack to get us into the dark and uh there's there's a fair bit of lighting work done actually today i i start with uh, the you know the the more 
in Hindi sign over here, this little mini sculpture, if you will. And I decided to try and light it up with uh, appropriate colors uh, of green and purple. Um, looks kind of nice, I think. Very subtle, nothing too crazy. Uh, I'm pretty happy with, with how that lighting looks. I might, might adjust it again later, uh, but I, I like that it's not... Oh, that's when it disappears. I was wondering, because at one point I have to go back and add that light back in. I didn't know when it got deleted. Anyway, uh, but yeah, the, the green and the purple I, I felt was nice for the sign, but it wasn't going to work for the entire area. Um, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to keep the warmth of, you know, like the India theme. So we go in with some oranges, uh, but we balance that orange out with not blue in this case, but with a bit more of a purple. It's in that same vein of like blue and yellow. It's just purple and or and a different shade of orange. They're still complementary. You just kind of rotate around the color wheel. Uh, and I actually really like how that's looking. Um, it looks a little bit like a nightclub, maybe, especially when we get more of the lighting done. But uh, I, I like how the uh, the orange and purple is working. And the front over here as well, I get the purple, you know, pinkish purple lighting going again. Uh, for some reason, I think of, even though it's maybe not right, but I think of purple and green and yellows when I think of PFAL. Maybe that's just me. So, I mean, again. Feel free to correct me if you guys feel differently. Uh, and then again, this is like, I figure there's a lot of lighting work to do over here. Let's do it right now. Because it's not complete if it's not lit up. And we're trying to have our zoo open for, you know, longer in the day and in the night. So might as well get all this lighting done now so that eventually I don't ever look at something and regret the fact that I forgot to do the lighting or I decided to leave it till later. Um, now is when I need to realize, hold on a second, <laughs> where did these stairs go? <laughs> Thankfully, I could just duplicate the stairs from the other side. This was symmetrical, so I was able to do that. Um, but my heart skipped a couple of beats when I realized at some point I deleted this entire stair section. Um, anyway, uh, you know, adjust the lighting a little bit, get a little bit more of that orange and purple going in the back over here as well, trying to figure out exactly where to put the spotlights. Uh, I want to keep the hard shelter areas and the maze area dark at night. So again, if the peafowl want to run away and hide, they can. Oh, and look at this. I'm really happy with how this, uh, uh, you know, balcony area kind of turned out with the warm orange lighting and the bench over there. Uh, feels just, you know, it feels like the right amount of romantic, I would say, almost. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but uh, I, I really like the, the color combination here. And I get that area light up there as well to kind of light up this walkway. Um, again, a little night clubby, but uh, yeah, I'm not complaining. Um... And then I got to light up these sculptures as well because they're just so beautiful. It'd be a shame to lose them in, in the darkness. Uh, and I like how, again, the orange and the you know pinkish purple kind of pairs. Um, so I try to you know, spread that out nicely over here, get the tail lit up as well on both sides. Overall, pretty happy with uh, with how this has been lit up. I think I do a little bit more work here and there or... Oh yeah, see, now is when I realize... Hold on a second, where'd my green light go? But yeah, green and purple. I don't know why. That's just what comes to mind when I think of PFAL. Uh, gotta get some of these lights set up as well. Might as well do them where, you know, trying to complete this area. So that's uh, quick and easy work. Add some more lights on this side as well. It's a little too dark. And a little bit on that side. Uh, and then, I believe, I take a look at the my, my lighting work just to see if I like how the elephant sculpture looks. Uh, but yeah, time to light up the uh, the train station area. And uh, I, I put the entrance slash exit area in that bright orange. And then the rooftop, I try to light up with the purple. I feel like it works nicer with the, uh, you know, the, the, flowers and stuff we've got up there so try to blend that nicely uh, and just kind of looking around one last thing to fix with uh Bagra, but actually i forgot to do earlier but this was commented on that it wasn't really centered uh and i understand how that can be really frustrating it bothers me as well i just hadn't noticed it so i went in there and just fixed that up but apart from that i think we're done most of the lighting work ah yes of course gotta light up the uh the massive clock of course otherwise what's the point of having it up there i wish that ring um on the actual clock would glow, but I, I don't think I can build that. Hmm, maybe? No, I don't think the lighting pieces really work nicely uh, for that. But yeah, get that nice under lighting going. I really like how the under light kind of looks. I always like how that looks. Um, and then I'm also going to duplicate that down over here to light up the Americas sign. Uh, I recently learned that you can get custom fonts from the Steam Workshop, and uh, I've been eyeing some of them, so expect me to Start pulling in some custom fonts for things like the America sign that don't need to be so big and weird looking, chunky looking. But yeah, that's um, all the work, I think. No, it's not, right? Doing my little rotation over here, I realize, hold on, this would be terrifying to come into in, you know, in the darkness. So let's go ahead and, and light this area up. And since we're lighting that area up, let's light the exit up as well. And now, now we're done. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know. 
by leaving a like and a comment down below if you'd like to see more Sunday specials of these, you know, quick speed builds and finishing off work. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.